I need you to grab the following. I need you to grab um, something sharp to sharpen your pencils with, but also we're gonna be doing some uh, new techniques that require you to have like a blade or sandpaper. Um, if you have a sharpener, that's gonna be really important today too. If you don't have a sharpener, a blade will work. Uh, so sandpaper is really, really useful today. If you don't have it, then just your sharpener will work. You're also going to need tools for erasing. You obviously are going to need your pencils, all of them. Um, you are going to need something to blend with. And finally, you are going to need a paintbrush of some kind. What I want you to do right now is to grab your, uh, grab a pencil, um, pencil that's gonna work the best. It's probably your darkest pencil. What I'm gonna show you right now is how to make graphite powder. Let me show you what it's for. So first of all, let me show you how to make it and then we'll talk about what it's for. Inside this little container, I have a powder that came from all my broken pencils. I um, break my pencils all the time. Um, and so whenever I break my pencils, I save the tips and then I grind them up into powder. This powder in here is called graphite powder. And artists use this powder for drawing. Let me show you how. So what you do is you grab a little bit of it and then you put it on your paper and you spread it around, okay? And you can use a Q-tip or anything to spread it out, okay? And it gives you a really nice, even tone without pencil marks. It makes shading a lot smoother and it doesn't leave pencil marks. So um, for this person's skin right here, I used graphite powder. Um, and I think, I think I used one of these and I put the graphite powder on there. And then I just blended it out. And for the darker areas, I just dipped it in more graphite powder and I put it on there. So graphite powder is a really great way of covering large areas smoothly. Um, it's good for creating fluffy textures and it looks really smooth. So when you wanna add um, tone without texture, that's what graphite powder is for. We're gonna be using it today. So let me show you a few different ways that you can make graphite powder. All right, the first technique is the easiest. The first technique is with sandpaper or with a nail file. So if you have a nail file at home or sandpaper, same thing. What you wanna do is you wanna grab your pencil and you literally just roll it around in there that powder right there is graphite powder. I keep a little jar of it because I draw so much, right? But um, you can just put it on your paper like in a corner. You don't need a lot for today. You just need a little bit. So uh, technique number two is with a sharpener. Let me show you how. What you do is you take the very tip of your pencil and you put it in at an angle only the tip, okay? We don't want any wood to get in there. And you just roll it around in there. And that is your graphite powder. What I'm gonna be showing you today is how to draw hair. I'm gonna be showing you, um, today is gonna to be all about wavy hair. One technique that is really helpful when you're drawing hair is to have an extra piece of paper that you um, put under your hand so you're not smearing, uh, pencil everywhere. So here we go. Using a very, very light pencil, like an H or a 3H, you are going to draw this shape for me. So you're going to start at the bottom corner and you're going to draw like a lazy letter M. Okay. And I'm going to help you right now. So here we go. I want you to start right here on the bottom left hand corner. And you are going to go up you're going to draw a letter M that is um, very lazy. Like a letter M that didn't quite, you know, turn out. 
or like a letter S that fell down. Okay, whatever you want to think of it as. And if you mess up, it's okay. Just erase it, fix it. Okay. Then um, we're going to repeat the same shape at the bottom. So you're going to join it down here. And then you're going to repeat the same shape down here. And then you're going to join it at the tip like this. When you're drawing hair, it is important that all your strokes are tapered strokes. This is not a tapered stroke. A stroke that is the same thickness from beginning to end is not a tapered stroke. A tapered stroke is a stroke that starts out light, then it goes heavy, and then it goes light again. And by the way, I don't always get it right the first try. So I might have to draw a few before I get it right. So um, it takes muscle memory to train your hand to do this, but a tapered stroke looks something like this. There we go. That's a tapered stroke. Okay. You go light, then you go heavy, and then you go light again. So you might want to practice um, on the right-hand side a little bit until you are able to create consistent tapered strokes. The other thing is this. Um, it is important that whatever hair texture the person has. So if the person has wavy hair, then you need to follow the wave. So you should not be drawing straight strokes. If the person has wavy hair, then you have to follow the curve of the hair. If the person has curly hair, then all your strokes have to be curly. If the person has kinky hair, like, then you would follow the shape of the hair. So all your strokes have to be tapered and they have to follow the curves of the hair. Step number one, when you're drawing hair is to first draw an outline of the shape of the hair. Right now, we're not gonna drew, draw an entire outline of the hair because it would take us too long to do that. But if you were drawing this person, your first step would just be to draw like the outside of the hair shapes. So she would have a lock of hair here, another one here. You know, you would draw this curve and then this. This is the shape that we're gonna be working with today. So under this square down here, let's begin writing down the steps to drawing hair. So step number one is to draw the basic shape or shapes of the hair. Okay. All right, so step number two, you are going to block in your deepest shadows. So number two, block in the deepest shadows with an HB pencil. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna put in our deepest shadows, but we're not gonna use our darkest pencil. We're just gonna use like an HB, which is like a normal pencil, okay? Number three, as you are blocking in your shadows, you want to start using tapered strokes and you want to follow the shape of the hair. So um, for step number three, use tapered strokes that follow the texture or shape of the hair, okay? So here's my HB pencil. Oh, make sure your pencil is sharp. Um, we're gonna be creating this pattern of shadow, mid-tone highlight, sh mid-tone shadow, mid-tone highlight, mid-tone shadow, mid-tone highlight, over and over and over. Right now, we're just doing this randomly, but when you look at a real person, they are going to have this pattern on their head too. And you just need to figure out where the midtones and the shadows are at. Okay. Um, the lighter the hair, the less difference between the highlights and the shadows. Right now, I'm going to be drawing hair that is dark because I have dark hair. <laughs> um, but if you want to make it look like it's blonde hair, you would basically not push as hard in the shadows. We're going to start out with our shadows. Okay. 
So step number one, after we put our shape is to start shading in your shadows. Take your pencil, make sure it's sharp. And we're gonna begin in this corner down here. We're gonna follow the shape of the hair. And you're gonna do several tapered strokes that follow the curvature of the hair. Please notice that the ends are nice and tapered. They're not blunt. They're very pointy at the end. Okay, now this is my shadow. This is my midtone. This is my highlight. So now I'm going to go into a midtone again. So remember tapered strokes, okay? And if it means that you have to flip your paper upside down, so I'm going to go like this. And remember to curve your strokes to follow the shape of the hair. But I'm making sure that this side is lighter. And these strokes are reaching out towards the highlights, but they're not going into the highlights, okay? So leave your highlights alone, don't touch them. All right, I'm gonna flip my paper over again, because like I said, I have a heavy hand and I'm struggling to make tapered strokes on both sides. So I'm going to now draw the taper stroke in that direction. Shadow, mid-tone, highlight, mid-tone, shadow, mid-tone. Here's my highlight. Now I'm gonna go into another mid-tone and uh, just follow the shape of the hair. Okay, now every once in a while, you want to go in there and you want to add a dark hair that's like, you know, out of place. So um, take your pencil and you want to like drag it in a little bit every once in a while. So you want to draw some rogue hairs like in a few places. Don't do too many. So you, you know, you have a couple hairs that are not behaving and that's that's a good thing. Um, you you can even like go across and just you know, draw a hair that's out of control. Hair shouldn't be, you know, perfect. So, okay. So we are on step number three right now. We use tapered strokes that follow the texture of the hair to lay in our shadows. All right, we're now gonna move on to step number four. Step number four is a fun one. You're going to use a brush to gently blend your shadows towards mid-tones and highlights, okay? So we are gonna break out that brush that I asked you to grab, okay? Now, if you don't have a brush, then you can use a Q-tip or you can use toilet paper, but I'm gonna show you why you want a brush. If you take a Q-tip, here's what's gonna happen. Um, you are going to lose the texture that you just created, okay? And uh, it just kind of looks like a blob, okay? Watch what happens when you use a brush. See, the brush is still blending, but you're not losing your texture. Hair is all about texture. So you want something that will blend, but it's going to do it gently. And all the little bristles of the brush are going to imitate the texture of hair. You're going to take your brush and you are going to follow the shape of the hair. Okay, you're not going to just brush, you know, back and forth. You are following your strokes. So let me zoom in so I can show you. Begin at the corner. And this brush is awesome because it has a point. So it helps you to do these, um, you know, pointy areas a lot better. Here we go. What you want to do is you want to just blend it towards the highlight. And what you're doing is you're creating mid-tones. 
I don't know if you guys can tell, but it laid down a little bit of tone and it's hard to see because, you know, my camera isn't um, the best, but it is blending. It's just blending very gently and that's what you want. Okay. So go in there and blend your shadows towards the highlights. And uh, do the same thing on each of your shadow areas, but follow the shape of the hair. But if the person has really like blonde hair, you would use an H pencil or a 3H pencil. I hope that makes sense. All right, here we go, you guys. We are going to be artists now, and we're going to use graphite powder because graphite powder is awesome. So. Take your graphite powder. You only need a small amount. Dip the tip of the brush into your graphite powder. By the way, graphite powder is messy. So this is when you might wanna grab another sheet of paper that is clean and put it underneath where you don't want it to go, okay? We're gonna take our graphite powder and we're gonna put it into the shadow areas and we're going to push it towards the highlights, okay? Be gentle, don't put too much, okay? We're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna add some graphite powder and uh, we're just gonna brush it on and we're gonna push it towards the highlights and see how I have a little bit there. I'm just gonna chase it into the other shadow area and uh, just, okay? And remember the reason why we're using graphite powder right now is because we don't, we want this to get darker and we, we want to add a little bit of tone into our highlights, but we don't want to um, add, um, we don't want this, if we keep blending with a blending uh, stump, we're going to lose our, um, we're going to lose our texture. By using graphite powder, we are adding tone that looks very blended without having to blend at all. So that is why we're using graphite powder. It allows you to lay down a very gentle layer of tone without having to blend. Because in order to get this look, you would normally have to blend with a Q-tip or a blending stump. But we are using a different technique that allows us to get tone without having to blend with a Q-tip or a blending stump, okay? So now you have um, laid down a little bit more tone. You can blow on it if you have extra. Um, okay. All right. The next step, step number six. We are going to add some texture in our highlights because right now our highlight areas don't have any texture and real hair has texture everywhere, not just in the shadows. So I want you to grab a pencil that is really sharp and light. So go grab your H pencil. If you don't have an H, then just use your regular pencil that you have, but make sure that it is sharp and that you don't put very much pressure. Here we go. We're gonna concentrate in the highlight areas. So you are going to just add a little bit of texture in those areas so that it doesn't look like there's nothing there. Remember, follow the shape of the hair as you're doing this. And uh, it is okay to draw some rogue hairs that are not behaving. So every once in a while, go in there and just kind of draw yourself a hair that's a little darker than the rest, you know? And uh, that's okay. You want those hairs because, you know, human beings are not perfect and our hair doesn't always like act normal. It doesn't always, you know, behave the way we want it to. So it is okay to have a few hairs that are not following the pattern. Uh, so I'm gonna take my um, pencil right now and I'm gonna draw a hair that's like, you know, going this way. <laughs> We have added some texture into our highlights. It's looking really good, right? Um, by the way, it's a good idea to add a few little strands of hair that are not behaving. So go in there 
and draw some like little flyaway hairs that are like, you know, being troublesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we are going to move on to step number six. What we're going to do now is um, we are going to darken our shadow. Okay. So at this point, you want to switch to a darker pencil. So far, we have used an H and an HB pencil. We're now going to transfer into a 2B. All right, here's my 2B. Here we go. Same thing as before, you guys. Uh, lots of tapered strokes. And, um, you know, concentrate in the shadow areas. These are the areas that we're trying to add contrast into. Don't go too far into your midtones. Try to stay within your shadows. Okay, and remember to rotate your pen, your drawing if you um, have a hard time drawing tapered strokes in both directions. Okay, we are almost finished. See how good that's looking? Okay. <laughs> so the next thing that you're gonna do is another round of blending. So very gentle, don't overdo it, okay? You're not trying to get rid of your beautiful texture that you've been building up. So starting in the shadow areas, just you know, pull the graphite a little bit, but don't overdo it. I'm not pulling too much graphite into the um, highlights because I don't want my highlights to go away. So, you know, head towards the highlights, but don't, you know, don't, don't get rid of them. Just barely touch your highlights as you're doing this. Okay. See how beautiful that is? Oh my gosh. Dang, so good at drawing hair. Okay, all right, we are almost done. So um, let's go to number, step number seven, bring back highlights with a sharp eraser. You're gonna pick out your highlights. So you're just going to drag this gently along the surface, following the shape of your strokes. And uh, be gentle, don't rub back and forth. If you rub back and forth, you're going to mess your texture up. So every once in a while, you need to change the tip again because it gets dirty so you want to rub this in your hands and then you want to make a point again okay so there's a point and uh, every once in a while erase in one area over and over and that's going to give you like a hair strand that's getting a lot of light okay If the hair that you were drawing was blonde, you wouldn't go as dark as I'm going. I went up to a 6B because I'm making hair that looks like mine. But if you um, were making blonde hair, you wouldn't go all the way up to a 6B. You might stick to like, you know, a, an HB or, or whatever. All right, one last round of blending. 
Here we go, very gentle, okay? Take your brush and just barely pull it across the surface. Don't overdo it. You don't want to lose your texture that you just created. Now, if you look at it and you decide like, hey, I, I lost some of my highlights, you know, I, I think it looks too dark, then this is the part where you um, would bring back your eraser and just bring back highlights one last time, then we're done, so. Remember, it's a pattern and you get to repeat it as many times as you want so that your hair looks as realistic as possible. Okay, there's my hair. If you look at something and you're like, ah, that looks a little weird, then just use your brush and blend it out, okay? You guys see how like luscious that hair looks? I know, this is like good stuff. <laughs>